welcome to the Mrs V Shift Stories. I'm Scarlett Vesper, Mrs V, and very excited tonight we have the wonderful Jen Davis. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Jen Davis is from Wise Women, which I love, which is all about supporting, finding jobs for women yep. in media. Media, advertising and marketing. Fantastic. So we're going to ask our questions. Mm -hmm. We start <clears throat> with number one. Which is your story. My story. So yes. I am a business partner. I'm a mother. I'm a partner. I'm a friend. Um, so lots of different jobs and lots of different hats. I grew up in South Yorkshire in London around my family. It was a pretty, it wasn't the 2.4 family upbringing that some people have, but that was fine. I had a great time, but I think it, what it really did was taught me to be a really strong and resilient person. And there are qualities I think that I needed to have for later on in life, which I yeah. think we'll talk about a little bit later on. Um, went to university and then from university I went to London and from there I fell into the world of recruitment and actually was pretty good at it. And that <laughs> became cool. Yeah, and that became basically the career. And then eight years on, my partner and I, Tony, we came to Australia to do some travelling. I'm only meant to be here for two weeks. But he was off to a role um, working with ACP, which was to launch Top Gear into Australia. And that's what he'd been working oh, on in the yeah. UK. So it okay. kind of all worked really well. So we said, we'll stay here for 18, 18 months. And 10 years later, two children, Ava and Charlie, um, were still here. How and yeah, so it's, it's been kind of one of those very natural progressions to get to here, to get to Australia. And when I came over, I worked in recruitment um, and then I moved into executive search. Yeah. And then I had my first child, Ava, and then took some time out of the industry. And then I ended up working for an executive search company called Talent Capital and worked with a really fantastic guy who just gave me so much flexibility and just gave me so much balance and opportunity. And I worked with him three days a week. And when Ava was four, we then ended up having Charlie, who's now three and a half. And I went back to work with Chris, again, because he offered so much flexibility and just really enjoyed working with him. And everything we were, I was doing in that role was executive search in media, marketing and advertising. And then Sarah, who is the founder of Wise Women, we basically, she, we got talking one day and she just had her first baby and she was like, I really need to do, I really need to do a project. I really need to be doing some working. <laughs> so it's not the kind of person that's going to basically just sit and just kind yeah. of be fulfilled by just looking after the child. She wanted something else as well. So she looked for, to try and do some project work, but there didn't really seem to be anything in the world of media marketing and advertising that would basically what she wanted to do. So we set she set out a sent out a survey and that was to really find out if there was other women that were feeling the same way and mm. we got all the results back from the survey and it turned out there was a lot of women that were in the same situation who had been on maternity leave and were wanting to do some project work while they were on maternity leave and it was for different reasons some wanted just to earn some extra money some wanted to really kind of just have an additional thinking stream other than just kind of feeding and sleepless nights and everything else that goes with obviously having a newborn yeah. um, and from there basically Wise Women was born. I love that and I love that you've actually started a business because you experienced the benefit of yeah. having you know that done really well in recruitment finding yeah. a job that really yeah. supported being yeah. a mum and yeah you know that whole appreciation with it and yeah you know, I think it's fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Well done. Thank you. So tell me, what is the best advice you've ever received? So, when my daughter... <laughs> that was such a big sign. Yeah. <laughs> is that because there are so many different pieces of advice or is it the story behind it? It's the story behind it. Okay. Yeah, and it's advice that I was told in a really difficult situation, but it's advice that I always go back to now whenever yeah. I'm facing a challenge. Um, and it's advice that I give to a lot of people as well. And basically, is when my daughter was six months old, she was diagnosed with cancer. Oh, no. And she's fine. She's all good now. She's yes. a happy, healthy, fun, nearly eight-year-old girl. Yes. So she's doing, she's doing really well. But it was at that time when, obviously, just everything was going on and just so much was happening that it was really just difficult to be able to comp compartmentalise what we were having, the journey we were about to go on yeah. when we found out about this diagnosis. 
I remember being sat in a room one day and we'd had two weeks of tests and my daughter was in intensive care and we didn't know what's going to be happening and we were just kind of really just thinking how are we are going to get through this, how is Ava going to get through this and the doctor that um, our oncologist, she was a lady called Dr Sue Russell, just a fantastic woman, just incredibly calm, just really kind of spelled out what the next 12 months of our life would be. And this 12 months of our life was going to be helping Ava through 8 to 10 rounds of chemo, different operations, and really getting her on the road to recovery. And she was really confident that she was going to be okay. But I remember sitting in, sitting in that room thinking, how are we going to, how are we going to do this? How are we actually going to get through this next 12 months? And she said to me, and Tony, she just said, don't look at it as in a 12-month journey. Just take it step by step, day by day, treatment by treatment. And we did just that, and we got to the end of the 12 months, and I look back and I just thought, how did we, look what we've just done. Isn't that amazing? And it was the advice that I kind of always taken on board now, and I think you always have to look at a perspective or a situation that you're in and think, don't look at how I'm going to get there, just take it step by step, and before you know it, you'll look back and think, wow, this is what I've just overcome. It is, it's it's so true, it's that thing of, um, and I know in my own life, it's, just deal with today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, deal with today because that's all there is. Yeah. And because a lot of the time it's in our heads. Yeah. You know, like that. Yeah. It's the fear of the, you know, it stands effy, fear of, I don't know what the, the anna is, the anna is, yeah. the, um, there's an anagram thing around it. And it's fear of what you don't know. Yeah. And it's so true. Yeah. What great advice. Yeah, and yeah. it was, and it stayed with me, and I pass that advice on now to lots of different people Ooh, in different weird. situations. So, yeah, just take each situation as it comes and take it step by step. Love it. Well, we're grateful for that advice. Yes. Edward. I'm glad everything's all right. You're welcome. Well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, number three, what was the catalyst for success for you? That's, well, that's a really good question because how do you define success? Yes. And I think everybody has a different definition of success. And I think my catalyst for success was really my childhood and upbringing because my childhood and upbringing just taught me to be, just as I said before, like a really strong, resilient, independent person. Yeah. I always knew that I had to create my own success yeah. because if I didn't create my own success, there was going to be nobody f- for me to fall back on. So I, ha- I knew that I had to be independent and I knew that to kind of be independent, you had to have success in your own way. Um, and I think really the, the, the catalyst for success and that got me on that path was the independence mm. that I created for myself. And being in a job that I really, I guess, had to drive for and create kind of the financial independence and then the success that came from that was a confidence in myself that I knew I could do it on my own and it when you when you did the the Vicky interview last week um or the week before from Jess for Success and she was talking about the self-imposter and it's kind of you you get this person niggling in a way in the back of your head going oh but can you do this can you do this and yes of course you can and you've got to have that confidence and the success I think comes from me in terms of having that independence but then having the confidence to be able to say I'm going to do this and this is where the whole wise women piece came into play Mm. is that I think being confident enough to start the business and being confident enough to have that success and taking this kind of new I guess idea into a marketplace such as media marketing advertising that wasn't necessarily about flexibility but getting people to really embrace the flexibility and embrace the idea and embrace the business and I think the success is obviously just knowing that you're doing a really good thing yeah and I've got two beautiful kids I've got a great partner we live in Sydney and for me that's a success gorgeous love it thanks thank you uh now number four which is what do you use for as a tool for challenge? I mean, I love the advice that you obviously yeah. use that to get through. Is there another tool for challenge that you use? To stay true to myself. Yeah. Um, and I think just to trust my gut instinct um, and try not to really overthink things because yeah. it is very easy. And look, I'm 
I'm guilty of doing that a lot. My yeah. partner will say that I'm guilty of overthinking things and worrying too much. But I think in just in terms of taking on challenges, it's just being just a really strong individual and being confident and going back to the advice that I was giving is just take that challenge step by step yeah. and try not to worry about what might happen because you don't know what's going to happen yeah so you just it. have to, you just have to go with it and you just have to deal with the facts that you have to hand at that particular time and make a decision or make a choice or make a step or whatever it might be based on the information that you have to hand and just trust in yourself that it's the right thing to do do you find that uh because you work in recruitment mm. and you have you're dealing with people's issues all the time yeah is have you found or learnt something from the women that you speak with mm. around what they do uh they just trust themselves and right. a lot of the women are in the same situation is that some women that i meet kind of have those confidence issues or they've been in that situation where they've thought can I do this am I actually capable of taking on this job am I good enough to be able to do this job yes you absolutely are capable yeah. of doing this job but I think it's a common thread that runs through a lot of women that I meet through the wise women business is that they do kind of sometimes have that crisis of confidence and whether they're just coming back from maternity leave or whether they're just about to take on the new CEO role or whether they're about to just go into a boardroom where they're the only female kind of at some point or another they have that confidence issue and that person in the back of their head saying can you do this and I think that they've just got to have this confidence to say yes I can do this such an important thing we were just talking about it before we started confidence mm -hmm. is key it is key it is key it is key what do you think is the issue with society today if we were talking about this before um something that I've just become really passionate about and just finding out a bit more about is um homelessness and the epidemic yeah. in women over the age of 50 and it's actually very scary about how you can suddenly have everything and then all of it just get taken away from you and I was watching a program on SBS mm. which was talking a lot about this and they had three different women about women that have been successful in their, in their own right for what they felt was success and then found themselves either living in their car or just having absolutely nowhere to go and a lot of it kind of comes from just a situation where just something just went wrong yeah. in their life and they kind of went on this downward spiral and this is another it can reason happen like that. and it can happen yeah. just like that and not enough people know that this is kind of going on out yeah. there for women because a lot of these women aren't actually kind of saying that it's going on in there out there because they're actually ashamed of it and that's the big thing that happens because what we were talking about was that a lot of women what they do is they you know, they get married, they have the kids, and they get time away from work, and then they go back in, or they try to go back in. They're either too old, or they don't have the confidence. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, it just is a downward spiral from there because they're divorced and, you know, yeah. end up being uh, on the street. And apparently, it's I think it's over... 50% of women over 55 have the chance of being homeless. Yeah, homeless yeah. and uh, this is another reason why we're so mm. passionate about wise women is that, um, that after, after the age of 35, over 57% of women in the media market and advertising, advertising industry just disappear from the workforce. And one of the reasons for that is that they can't find a flexible role that will allow them to have the career and allow them to have the family as well. Yeah. A result of that is a knock on to their superannuation. So they yes. get to the point where they need to, their super, they need to draw on their super and their super is half the amount of what a man's super is. Yeah. Um, yeah. And again, it kind of goes back to this program that I was watching on SBS and these women, they have no super. They just had nothing. So something needs to happen to the kind of the industry to help women kind of really get them back into the industry, get them back into the workforce and make them f and help them become financially independent so that they don't find themselves in that situation later on in life. That's right. They need support. I mean, I remember doing, I was a panellist at one of the agencies and I um, remember a girl come, came running up to me and saying, Oh, wow, you know, how does it feel to be the only 40 mm. year old in the room? And there was 100 women, and I was the oldest one there, yeah. and I, went, I hadn't even noticed. But it's like, and she said to me, And where do all the women go? And yeah. I was like, It's true, where do they go? And the problem is, they go and start their own businesses, yeah, because they can't get employment. 
but there's only a very small percentage of businesses that actually succeed. Yeah. So what happens to the other people? Yeah. Then? Yeah. So and, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, just going on yeah. as well is that um, the childcare rebate is about to change as well. Mm. So basically, that's now going to be means tested. So there's women that come back to work, and the government have been talking for a long time now. We need to get women back into the workforce. We need to get women mm. back into the workforce. They're now means testing it. So people and families that earn over a certain income no longer get that rebate so that's going to make it even harder for women because I that could become women it's amazing i know so women are sitting there and wanting to work but for them financially it's it doesn't the, the sum it just doesn't don't add, add up because i've just been talking to a girlfriend who's a single mom mm. and she's the same struggle it's like i'm working to pay for the child care she doesn't get support from yep. her partner and so there's the struggle of going, I want to be with my child, I can't even earn the same amount of money, yeah. and they're stuck. Yeah. And so she's like, well, I'll move out of Sydney, no, yeah. I'm going to move back here. Or yeah. So it's really tough. And, it's really and tough. And I'm glad that it, the conversation is happening now. Yeah. We just need to have more of it. Yeah. And with the whole financial thing of, with mm. Wise Women is that we do different events. So last year we did four different events across the year, and one of them was about um, owning your own financial future. Yes. And we got kind of 50 of our members, our wise women members, um, all came along and we had a panel and a panel of experts and we had some wealth advisor, we had a property expert, we had a mortgage advisor. And it was really just helping and educating women that this is what you can be doing now to kind of help yeah, yeah, and bulk, your up your super, um, bulk up your super for the future so that you're going to be in a place where you are a bit more financially independent. Well, that's part of doing this is the event which we'll mm. be doing in this wonderful um beautiful room. hotel in the, the langham and it is about that is about mm. education and informing to saying there are different solutions yeah. and we'll be doing a finance panel and of course you guys will be there too yeah, um, yeah. And looking forward to it celebrating all the wonderful things that you're doing yeah love that love that thank you so number six is teach me something i don't know so 800 children Yes. Um, across the year are diagnosed with cancer oh. um, and this is a number I mean with cancer it's it's one of those things where there's obviously a lot of research going and a lot of more, lot more children are surviving from this which is fantastic but still a lot more needs to be done um, and the Garvin Institute is basically created something called genome power um, oh. and that's where they're looking at the genome sequencing of each child's cancer and each child's tumour so they can look at kind of the DNA within that cancer, within that tumour, and then what they can do is create, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? I've completely lost my words. <laughs> right. I've completely lost my train That's of words. Right. Um, so they're doing something to, they're getting information from the kids yeah. that have got it, and they yeah. discover and they, what yeah. genealogy. Yeah, and, they, and then basically they create e each individual treatment for each child and each child's cancer, because at the moment it's kind of, it's one treatment for all. Oh, and that necessarily okay. may not work for every child. Yeah, so yeah. with the genome sequencing is that they're looking a lot more into um, a child's DNA. Oh, they're testing about 400 children's genome makeup. Um, and off the back of that, they'll then create individual treatment for each individual trial, which will obviously then help more and more children survive cancer, which is absolutely awesome. fantastic. I love that. And I think it's one of those things where for us, when Ava was diagnosed, is that you don't mm. realise that all this is going on and when we went into the kind of hospital and we kind of got into really understand that there's a whole different world there and oh look it's 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 scary the, it's very scary when you go into it my dad was a cancer surgeon so he you know we had a lot in the family my mum was a nurse so we were, you know saw a lot yeah and um also when i had a scare as well you suddenly dip into this world where yeah. you go oh my god and suddenly it's a really important vital world that yeah. you need to understand and yeah. you hope support for yeah. and that, that you don't hope it happens to you but you've dipped into it and you've seen yeah. the importance of supporting yeah mm. and just want to really be able to kind of create awareness that this is actually a world that's happening out there and this is happening to, to young children and but the research that's happening is just absolutely phenomenal and yeah yeah it's yeah. gonna hopefully so gorgeous, I'll put yeah. a little link on below to them. Okay, too. fantastic, thank you. Thank you. And what was the biggest shift that happened in your life? Having children. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yes. It, and look, this is obviously just, this comes back to wise women as well, is that you have children, your life completely changes, yep. your priorities completely shift, and you kind of, on having this career and you 
just doing fantastic things and you really only have yourself to think about or your partner to think about and your friends to think about and then you have children and just obviously life just changes from there so I think for me the biggest shift was obviously having children and having to reprioritize life and reprioritize what was really important to me and and then going back to obviously that Ava thing as well and, and that, big, that was yeah, a big massive. that was a massive shift for me and that was really where I thought what's really important in my life and mm. what's really important in my life is children yeah um, and making sure that I've got happy healthy kids and yeah. but to actually enjoy them as well and and that's where I'm always really appreciative of the fact that I had a lot of flexibility um, in my role right. before children yeah. and I was able to go back to that and that's really the key driver for me to to being part of wise women and building wise women is that I want other women to have that balance and I and I, it's important that businesses out there kind of really embrace flexibility um, and put together strong flexibility strategies for their businesses to get women back into the industry and, and to get women to be able to have that balance and to be, have that balance between work and also children as well. It's, it's so such important. A, it's such a big thing because I know um, recently I've spoken to um, Marilyn Spicer who's also, she's in HR, but she yeah. talked about the fact that a lot of employers now understand the importance of flexibility yeah. much more than they did yeah. because they have to keep their employees happy. Yeah. And um, and I think that, I mean, it is about education all the yeah. time because that is for them to understand the benefits. But the key thing is trust. Yes. You know, is that trust between employer and employee. Yeah. So, because they will give you 500%. And I know that when I was given Absolutely. that trust as an employer and they said, you just do your job, I don't care where you do it at home, or at work, yeah. I, I was like, gave him everything. Yeah. Because he gave him that trust. And I think yeah. they forget that. Yeah. Whereas I've got another friend who absolutely, they follow everything down to a T. Yeah. You have to tap in, tap out. And yeah. they just do their job and that's it. Yeah. And then they go home. And we did um, a lot of research recently and commissioned a white paper. Yeah. And some of the stats that came back from kind of flexibility across Australia was quite eye opening. And 79% of people would prefer flexibility over a pay rise. So flexibility See? is so important That's and it's so and it's not just about women that want flexibility, kind of millennials and Gen Z, they're looking for flexibility as they kind of move through their careers. So it's something that's happening and it's something that's not going away, but it's something that's so important as well that businesses really need to embrace it and really need to roll out their flexible strategy. Are um, they seeing more, is there more... There's a conversation around contractors yep. coming in and buying some incredible number 15 years. Most of us will be contracted. Yep. The Gig Society. The Gig Society. Now, yep. is that conversation being had by employers? And, and if so, what are they saying? Yeah. Well, a lot of employers are really, depending on where their business is at, they really like to bring contractors into the business because they can have this wealth of experience, this wealth of knowledge, and this wealth of skill set. They can bring somebody in for six mm. months, implement kind of that wealth of knowledge and experience, and then basically kind of they, they part ways. Um, so for businesses, it's a contracting thing is really good because they're getting an element of expertise here that they probably wouldn't be able to afford in a full-time yeah, role. Yeah. So from a contract perspective, it's really good for businesses. Really this good. This is why everyone, you know, regarding... I mean, and I can see for you, placement yeah. is also a contract too, yeah. helping people on that. Because it is really learning to show up in jobs. Yeah. You're not, you can't hide in yeah. jobs anymore. No. And it's really... Um, and that's why I love what I do because I help people have that yeah. confidence kind yeah. of to go, well, who am I if I have yeah. to show up and create my job and wonder yeah. what I'm doing without that fear factor. Yeah. And it is, it's because you're always stepping in that place of I'm responsible, I have to mm. show up and be my best. Yeah. And what does that look like? Yeah. And it's, it's going to be hard for some people, yeah. which I'm sure you've seen, yeah. the work you've done. But and I think if employers are talking about that mm. change, then we yeah. all need to be aware of it. I mean, there's a long way to go for this industry. Um, yeah. And this is, this is why kind of we're so passionate about Wise Women is because media marketing and advertising there's some businesses that do flexibility well but there is still a long long way to go right, and this yeah. is why kind of for us it's very important that we kind of we're out there and we're talking about flexibility and we're talking about the importance and look flexibility is something different to everybody what your flex is is different to my yeah, flex yeah. what my flex is different to different members that I meet on a daily basis and I think it's just about kind of businesses really understanding understanding kind of the outcome that can come from offering flexibility in the workplace 
Because one thing, just so you know, if you don't work in media and comms, is they're very long hours. Yes. And there's a, an, an expectation, and I know for a lot of businesses too, that you need to stay there till like nine or be available mm. all the time. So having someone who understands, okay, let's get someone who can fulfil that and you yeah. they look, be looked after, so you're as much interviewing the employer mm. yep. as much as the... Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And kind of going back to the contract piece as yeah. well is... Uh, um, so with with the members, we've got a real variety of members in, within yeah. Wise Women, and there's members that are basically just at the start of their kind of family um, stage of their career. So they're on maternity leave and they're wanting to come back flexibly. We've then got a pool of women that are entrepreneurs, um, and they've basically wanted to start their own business and they're looking for project and contract work to to really, I guess, help them just from a financial security perspective. And then we've got women that have kind of reached senior level roles within their career and something's happened that's kind of shifted their priorities. They want to spend more time with the family or there's been an illness or whatever it might be. Um, and these women look for kind of that contract and project work. And the women that are kind of in this entrepreneurial place and kind of this place where they want to do contract work, they absolutely love doing it because mm. they get to go into a business, they get to work with a variety of different people, individuals, talent, teams. They get to look under the bonnet of different businesses that mm, they might not yeah. necessarily always get the opportunity if they were seeking kind of the full-time permanent role. So for them, they get so much variety in their mm. in their kind of working life and get to work with different individuals, different businesses, and they're learning so much more than what they would if they were in a permanent full-time yeah, awesome. role for the next two to five years. See, something to consider. I and it's definitely it. something to consider, <laughs> yeah. Well, I could talk, keep talking about this, but um, we will stop it there and I'm sure we'll pick up the conversation another time. Absolutely. Because there's so much to be said about yeah. it. And I love your story and all your, your Thank answers. You. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you next week. Um, have a great week in the meantime. And this is uh, over and out from Mrs. V on Shift Stories. Bye. Mm-hmm.